was a powerful experience. I had the blessing of getting to work with Morris Kite, a man whom I profoundly admire, an activist from way back, and he's the founder of the Lesbian and Gay Community Services Center in Los Angeles. I had the blessing to work with Morty Manford, who is now deceased, he was a young, handsome man who was the one of the founders of the Gay Activist Alliance, very articulate person. And by his own admission, he was a, uh, a, a secular New York Jew, and you don't push around a secular New York Jew. <laughs> he did not let himself be pushed around. And uh, I appreciated very, very much working with him. We shared a room at the Marriott for three or four days, and uh, so I got to know him quite personally. Reverend Troy Perry, of course, was the founder of the Metropolitan Community Churches. He and I are still friends. Uh, I've left the Metropolitan Community Churches. I'm a bishop now in the Ecumenical Catholic Church, but my Episcopal ring has the original logo of the Metropolitan Community Churches on it to show how much I appreciate the work of that denomination. This was an event of history. And it's an event, history is always an event of people. And it was an event of history. This came after Stonewall. This came in the beginning era of gay liberation after Stonewall. It's not surprising that there was not a movement that rose up quickly after the fire. But I can guarantee you that Anita Bryant did more for the LGBT cause in this country than a lot of us did ourselves for it. And so I thank her and appreciate her greatly for the work that she did. <laughs> and of course, because of the work that she did, uh, all of this fledgling work that was done in different places eventually led up to the organizing abilities that we had when we were faced with the crisis of AIDS. That's enough with that. I went there to New Orleans uh, to serve, to help, and uh, spent three weeks hugging people and let them live cry right here and uh, wiping up their tears and ministering as best as I possibly could. And this has changed my life dramatically. It changed my life when I was in MCC back in those days and it's affected me to this day. And to this day I can't stop crying. Uh, a uh, good friend, Archbishop Donald Jolly, took me out uh, to dinner early in uh, August. He took me and my roommate. My roommate is dying. Uh, his name is uh, Reverend Larry Bernier. He was in MCC for many years. He's currently on hospice care. And while we were at dinner, we talked about his dying, and we talked about my having gone to New Orleans for the documentary. And I started crying at the dinner table. So I'm a it's very easy for the tears to start going when I see this documentary, or even when I read my own notes from way back in 1973. There's 101 stories in addition to what you've seen that I can tell you, but I'm going to shut my mouth now and leave it open to you. you can ask any questions you want to ask. Yeah? Um, when I first heard about this film, I, uh, I had ne I'd never heard the story. And uh, I worked with Robert Kemeno on his previous film, uh -huh. and uh, I told him then, I said, this is, how, how is it that this story is not um, as common knowledge as it, as it should be? It seems still like a local story, even though I know that it, was, it was covered nationally. It had to be extremely frustrating during this whole time back then to, to realize that more people didn't know about it. Uh, are you optimistic now that the film is going to uh, open up more conversation about this event and about the people? I certainly hope so. Uh, we need to remember in 1973 we had no national news organization for the gay community. Logo and here were not TV channels and uh, there was the only national LGBT newspaper was the Los Angeles Advocate. That was before it dropped the terms Los Angeles. Okay. And uh, 
the Los Angeles Advocate was operating on a shoestring back then. Uh, the, uh, the advocate, the editors of the Advocate, uh, helped us to get the National New Orleans Memorial Fund started. Um, David Goodstein never followed up when he bought the Advocate on that story, which was kind of sad. David but David Goodstein didn't take over until 1975. It actually was uh, front page news in the Advocate in ah, 73. I okay. went back and did the research. Then I'm mistaken. <laughs> okay. um, of course, since then, there's been a lot more publications and other uh, organizations for news dispersal that have come up, and I think it's necessary <laughs> to re replay this story. Uh, this documentary, I'm hoping, is going to get onto PBS and uh, be shown on PBS as well. So there are some PBS stations that are very favorable to us uh, across the United States. So it, I hope that that works. Yeah, um, early on, what Trevor, uh, Reverend Perry talks about uh, getting the street for the memorial. And then later he's talking about the memorial in the church. Did, did a memorial happen in the street? Because I wasn't clear about that. No. It, and so did it just get changed to the church? No. We, we had been looking for a church location to do the, the memorial, right. and we finally were able to get the location at the St. Mark's Methodist Church, which is right on the outside edge of the uh, Vieux Carré, the French Quarter. We did not have to go to the street, but um, from what I remember, there was a little bit of fear in City Hall that we would take the memorial to the street. They could not stop us. The laws in New Orleans, uh, especially regarding the uh, Mardi Gras uh, uh, parades and all that, they couldn't stop us from going there. And the um, uh, Mardi Gras crews, several crews were going to support us to be out on the street. And so we were going to go there. We had no doubt about that. We were going to be on the street. But some of the people in City Hall didn't like that. So. I'm profoundly grateful to Bishop Finnis Crutchfield and to Pastor Kennedy at St. Mark's United Methodist Church. They were absolutely gracious, wonderful, wonderful people. So. Yeah? Can you tell us you know, one of your stories that you have that we didn't see in the movie? Luther Boggs. It became my task because I stayed as clergy, I stayed long beyond the other clergy, but, uh, John Gill and Troy Perry, began my task to go to the hospital and see the patients there. Jim Hambrick was so tremendously, tremendously sad, I could not get close to him. It was impossible to, to even touch him with the tip of my little finger. The skin had been burnt off of his arms, so that all you saw was the muscle and sinew, and his arms were being suspended so that they wouldn't touch any other part of his body. And he was shivering, madly shivering, like people shiver when they're cold, but intensified, because he was cold. His skin was not there to keep him warm. and. Uh, he tried to talk with me, and he could not talk through the shivering. Uh, so I, I talked with him, I prayed with him, tried to comfort him as best as I could. He died there in the hospital. And I went to see Jean Gusnell, who also had se very severe burns. Uh, she was in a coma most of the time that uh, she was there. But there was Luther Boggs. Well, Luther was a wonderful man, and... I would go to see him in the hospital, and he, could, he wouldn't tolerate my asking him how he was. He wanted to know how this person was and how that person was, and he'd give me all of these names. And Luther Boggs pressured me to help him find another job. He said he wanted to be working on the day he got out of the hospital because he needed to earn money in order to help <coughs> Excuse me. He needed to earn money in order to help his friends. That goes very deep. 
You know, I may, I may be in ministry, I may be in church, but Christianity is not pronounced by documents from church executives. Christianity, our faith experience, is pronounced by people who do that kind of thing. He cared about the people that he knew. And um, that was a profound experience for me. So that's one of many stories. There were a lot of miracles that happened because of the fire, in spite of the tragedy. So, any other questions? Okay, thank you. Advise your friends and family about.